So today I want to show you a simple technique you can use to create a similar effect to parameter locking. So having parameters change only on specific steps and it's actually so easy in modular. I'm sure you're already doing this in your patches. At the end of the video, by the way, um, I will show you also how to do something like motion recording. So moving a parameter and recording the movement. So this is the basic concept. Here I have a simple eight step sequence with a sec three. Right, and now let's say that I want the decay and release of the envelope to be longer, but only on steps two and five. So in this case with the sec three, right, it's only a matter of using the additional rows. So for example, I will use row two for the decay and for the release, right? We have to open, of course, the attenue verters in this case. Right, and now I can set up step two and five. Right, and again, only on these steps, the decay and release will be longer. Let's say that I would like the attack to be longer on step one. So again, we have three rows in this case, so I can use row three to the attack, open the attenue verter and set up step one. Right, and this is the basic concept, setting the parameters per step. But now let's see this in a const um, context of a patch. Right here I have an eight step sequence. In this case, I'm using the eight sec from JW. This will sequence the FM operator. And in this case, with this sequencer, we don't have additional rows or additional outputs like we had with the sec three, but I can use an additional sequencer for this. And for something like parameter locking, I love using the ADDR sequencer from Bog Audio, right? Um, for sequencing parameters, it's small. It has also different ranges in the right click menu. You can change the different range. Um, settings and you can have also as many steps as you want with the expander we can uh, we will see this in a second here i have it set to eight steps right just like the sequencer that i'm using it has also the same number of steps and i'm using the same clock right and multiplied by two clock by the way this is not a clock module this is the bay module from venom this is just transporting the clock signals and um, throughout the patch just so we don't have blue cables, clock cables going everywhere in the patch, right? So it's again, it's running with the same clock. And now let's say that I would like this to control the feedback of the FM operator. Again, also here we have to open the attenuator. And let's say that this will happen on steps three and four. Right, so again, now we have the feedback locked to steps three and four and we can change the amount we can choose also different steps we can also do this in a different way if you want to experiment a bit and um, we can use the sequencer itself to drive the addr sequencer instead of the clock right so instead of the clock i will use the gate output of the eight sec and um, right in this case we have one two three four and five active steps so also on the ADDR, we will have five steps. I will just reset everything quickly. Right, so now we have the same number of steps and each hit on the eight sec will be one step on the ADDR sequencer. Right, so in this case, it's not steps three and four, but it's hits three and four, so it will be three and four. Right, on these steps, we will have more feedback. Right, but basically we get the same effect. Every another example, in this case I have a 16 step sequence with slips sequencing kick hole. Right, and now here I have multiple ADDR sequencers and you can see that I have also the expander, the ASX expander, which means that in this case, for example, I get 16 steps instead of eight, right? Again, running with the same clock has the same number of steps. And I can use this one, for example, to sequence the decay. Maybe another one that I will use to sequence the shape. Right, so again, really easy parameter locking. I'm sure you're already doing this yourselves. 
Um, I have here also the dual looping delay from 4MS, right? And I can sequence the input gain sending the kick all into it. Right, in this case, I'm going through process. I will show you in a second also why. But again, I have a 16-step sequence running with the same clock, in this case, sequencing the, the delay gain or input feed or delay feed, it's called here. Right now, I'm going through a process because sometimes when you sequence parameters, you might get all sorts of clicks, especially if it has something to do with the levels or volume. So all you have to do is you can use a slew limiter, you can use process here from VCV for example, just add a bit of slew and then you will get rid of the clicks. And of course this will also work with percussive sounds. Here I have, for example, the gate sequencer uh, set to two sequences of 32 steps. So again, in this case it will sequence a kick drum and I'm using the ADDR with three expanders, so I get 32 steps. Right, so I have the gate sec sequencing or triggering tremor 2, and I have the ADDR sequencing two of its parameters. I'm using also the noise section as a hi-hat again with another ADDR and expanders. Right, so again, parameter locking, This you might know this also as automation if you're using a DAW, for example. Right, only on specific steps at specific times, you get movement, you get change. I will just add a nice base to this. I have here two VCO units going through the new filter from synthesizer.com. There's a core with some side chaining. Let's have a look now at more complex examples. Here I have a Euclidean sequencer, the one from Count Modular. This is with sequence um, chords with palette, which is a Platz uh, clone, right? Going through a filter, some delay. Now also something, uh, with something like a Euclidean sequencer, all we care about is the length of the sequence. So in this case, we have the length of nine steps. Right, so we can use an additional sequencer that has nine steps to create parameter locking. Another sequencer that can be very useful for this is the digital sequencer from Vox Glitch. Right, it has all in all six sequences. Each of them can be up to 32 steps long. And also here we have range controls in the right click menu, either for all sequencers or per sequence. Right, so again, quite useful. So I have here the first sequence set to nine steps, as you can see here, again, just like the length on the Euclidean sequencer, it's running again with the same clock. So this one I will use, for example, to modulate the decay. Right, so now this will modulate or sequence or parameter lock the decay of this uh, chord uh, voice. Either another nine step um, sequence, this will modulate the wave. And then I have here two more sequences, but they are set to 18 steps. Instead of nine, they are set to 18 steps. So the parameter locking will happen only once every two cycles of the main sequence. Again, we have a nine step sequence. And instead of nine, we have 18 steps, right? So let's use, I will use one to control the inversion. And another one to control the color here of the low pass gate. Right, so again, we have two sequences with nine um, steps that will have happen every cycle, and two sequences with 18 steps, so basically double the length. So we have this once every second cycle. Now, what about um, when we have the sequence that has also variation in length? Here I'm using, again, the slips um, sequencer to sequence another FM operator here. 
And I have here an ADDR sequencer that changes or sequences the number of steps. So it will have, the sequence will have once four steps, once eight steps, once three, and once 16. Right now, for creating parameter locking in this case, we need to use a sequencer that also has length control. So here I'm using one from count modular, the 16 step sequencer. And also here I'm using another ADDR sequencer right to sequence the length. So both slips um, and the 16 step sequencer will have the same length all the time if it's 4, 8, 3 or 16. And this one I will use to sequence the feedback of the FM operator. So you can see it's moving together, right? It's changing also the length. Now with random sequences, it's a bit more tricky. Right here, for example, I have another sequence from a count modular. And again, I'm using the ADDR sequencer to change it. So sometimes it will run forward. And then sometimes, just like now, it will run randomly. Right, this will sequence the kick hole here from the fuck hole. So now, if I want to have again parameter locking, it's a bit tricky when the sequencer is running randomly. But for this, there are unique sequencers just like this one from Count Modular that have dedicated expanders. So if I make some space here in the right click menu, we can add the channel expander. And it will run, as you can see, exactly together with the main sequence. So basically now we have another sequencer that will run also um, together with the first sequence, even when it's running randomly. Right, that now I can use one, for example, to modulate the shape. In its right-click menu, I can also randomize things. Right, and I can add even another one, also randomize it and use this to control the decay. Right, there is also scaling here. Right, so even when it's running randomly, you can see all three sequences run together, never mind what. So you get perfect parameter locking. There is another um, sequencer that also has uh, expanders. This is the Benjolin oscillator which is an oscillator, but it's also a, a beautiful sequencer. It has this um, chaos button that will randomize everything, even when it's locked, right? And it has two expanders, the volts and the gates. So you can use this the sequencer to sequence things and use the expanders as parameter locking, right? In this case, it's sequencing a kick with plates. And I have here another one sequencing a hi-hat. Again, even when it's running randomly, everything will still run together. Let's have a look now at motion recording, so recording parameter movements live. Here I have the decimal sequencer from CV Funk. This is sequencing the oscillator part on Tremor 2. Right, basically at the end it will be a kick drum. And in this case we can use for example the arrange module also from CV Funk to record parameter movements. So first of all, again, I will run it with the same clock. I will connect also the reset. Now decima is a 10 step sequence. It has 10 steps. So also a range we will set again to have 10 steps. Right, and then reset things just so they run together, as you can see now. Right, and now we have multiple outputs that we can use. So I will use one of them to control the decay of, right, of kick hole here through the CV input. Right, all you have to do is activate record and start moving the knob here. Right, in a future version, the knobs here will move much better when recording. Um, so this will also be easier to do. Right, but now we have recording for the decay of the kick drum. 
Right, let's do the same for another parameter, the shape or shaper. Right, so again, I connected it, recording is on. Right, and we recorded the movement. I also have here the noise section as a sort of a hi-hat. And again, we will use another channel to um, record something for the decay of the noise. Right, so we have, again, the parameter locking um, while recording the movement with motion recording. Right, here I have also a bass with two VCO units. Right, again, going through um, side chaining and a nice chorus and also a filter. Right, and I would like to um, record something for the filter to have a modulation, movement, motion recording for the filter. So another module we can use is Remove Light from Sturmelder. First of all, in the right-click menu, we have different modes here, so different record modes. I will change this to Move, and you will see in a second also why. Right, and now this module works with mapping. So when it where it says unmapped, you click it, and now you can map any parameter. I will map the frequency right off the filter. Hit record. And now, because we changed the recording um, mode to move, only when I actually move the filter, this will start recording. So let's record something. Right, and when I let go, it stops. Right now I can hit run. And we have this motion recorded. Now to have this uh, somewhat in sync with the sequence, right, in this case I have a seven step sequence from the ADDR. So we can use a clock divider to have every seven steps um, resetting this recording, right? If I use a divided by seven, um, each cycle, it's a sort of an end of cycle output. Each cycle, it will output a trigger that I can use to reset the recording or the playback. Right, so now we have something a bit more repetitive. Now we can also use various samplers to record modulation, to record movement. So here, for example, I'm using the one from a Seco Cell, the Seco Sampler 2, which can also record CV, it can also record modulation. Right, so in this case, I have slips sequencing the VCO unit. And I would like to record movements for the decay of the, of the envelope. Right, so what we need, we need offset voltage. We need something that we can record. In this case, I'm using the offset, or I will use the offset from Rescale. This will go to the input of the sampler. The output will go to the decay. In this case, if I set monitoring on, I can listen to the changes. Right, and now all we need to do is record something. Right, something like this. Right, and we have this recorded. And now, again, I can uh, either use, again, a clock division to start this, or in this case, the uh, slips has an end of cycle output. Every time it ends a cycle, it will trigger the recording, the playback. Right, and of course, in this case, I can change the, with the cue, I can change the starting point. So we have again motion recorded. Right, I hope you will go and explore these ideas. Um, thank you for watching. Cheers.